Good morning, good afternoon. It is one o'clock on a Sunday. It's one o'clock on a Sunday. And Chinga D. Chig, guess what we're making today? You got it. We are making an Italian Christmas cocktail. Chinga D. Ching. Okay, so what I have here, let's start at the beginning. This is going to be three parts liquid. We are going to use an Italian Prosecco. Um, we are going to use Brut, which is 1.5% um, sugar content, content as opposed to extra dry. Now, when I was younger, I always went for the extra dry because the Brut, extra dry seems like it would be less sweet. Not true. Extra dry is the sweet one. It has a sweeter finish and a richer taste. It's great on its own, so extra dry is great for your champagne toast. But for an Italian spritzer, we are going to use um, an Brut, uh, I'm sorry, we're going to use a Brut Prosecco, which has a crispier finish. So let's start there. I like this um, Caposaldo. It's just a nice Italian sparkling wine. And then the star of our show. Um, in the summer, I love Aperol spritzes. This is the big brother to Aperol. This is Campari from the 19th century. It used to be made, it's a darker red. That's why I think it's better for a winter cocktail and a Christmas cocktail. It's a darker red because they used to crush these, um, what are they called, I wrote it down, cochinelle. Um, insects. <laughs> Hi, Stephen. How are you? Hi, Susan Katz. Um, they don't d use insects in the Campari anymore to get their color. They stopped that in 2006. Now they just use herbs and flavorings, and it's Chinotto and Casardelli. I didn't know that. I had to look it up. Hi, Sally Garcia. Your Christmas card was beautiful, by the way. I just saw it online this morning. Um, so along with the Italian Prosecco, which is only made in Italy, sparkling wine. We're going to use the Campari, uh, as I said, the big brother to the Aperol, Aperol, and the Aperol is a little bit lighter in color. That's why I think this also works for a Christmas cocktail. And then, of course, a mineral water and why not go for the San Pellegrino, also from Italy. All right, so let's start. I should have done this before I went live because, as you know, it's champagne and Prosecco and sparkling wines. Anything can happen when you're pouring it. So I have glasses at the ready in case I spill. Ah, uh, no spill there. Alrighty. Now first I'm going to rim the glasses because I want to, once I start making it, I'm making it right in the glass. So we're going to take, actually the um, orange can be a garnish if you choose to add it. So we're going to take a little orange. And then I took my Christmas sprinkles, my Christmas sugar. And isn't it something? The colors of it's the Italian flag. So red, white, regular sugar, and green. So that's what I'm going to try to put a little bit on each part of my glass. It is gorgeous here. It's, I know it's, it's got to be over 60 degrees already. Isn't that adorable? So it's perfect for all of my Italian friends and it's also perfect for anyone who wants a Christmas cocktail. Um, I think it's great to serve this either Christmas morning if you don't have to go anywhere, but more importantly, the day after Christmas when you're in your PJs and you don't have anything to do but sit on the couch and watch Christmas stories that you taped and didn't get to. Um, it's an aperitif, so it goes perfect. It's aperitif means before, so you drink it before the meal, which it's one o'clock. I'm sure not too many people have eaten yet. So we're going to start, and you do three parts, and should I just wing it? Yeah, I'll just wing it. Three parts, one, two, three, of Campari. Oh, there's my battery again. And then we are going to do two parts of our sparkling wine or Prosecco. And then you can top it off with your San Pellegrino. And I actually peeled and cut the oranges by section because I didn't think a whole big um, orange wedge would look good. 
And the Italians put ice cubes in there. I don't have the pretty ice cube, I just have a regular. I'm gonna top that off with a little bit more. All right, and what do we say? Chingaji ching, hee haw, hee haw. Oh, it's delicious. And if you don't, I like it better. I like to shake it up and mix it up and have it a little bit different than you normally would with an Aperol spritz. They're served everywhere. Um, Campari spritz are actually older. So I didn't invent it. It's a thing. It's a beautiful Christmas cocktail. Mm. So good. I'm going to make another. Hold on. This time I'm going to get my measuring cup. I want to make sure I do this right. Because I think I screwed it up. <laughs> I think I mixed it up. Okay, so first, let's, let's see if we could do this. I don't know if they'll stick. No, they're not sticking. I had these funky red. Oh, isn't that cute? Okay, so let's start this three parts per seco. Of course, you have to watch when you're pouring into your shot glass or... It'll spill over. It's a gorgeous day. I hope it's beautiful wherever you all are. All right, that's a little bit better. I reversed it. <laughs> what, else, what else is new? Perfect. Look at that. Look at that. Top it off. Add an orange, say hee haw. Ching ching. That's what the Italians say. That's how we started it off in March, saying ching ching. So ching ching. Oh, that one's better. Mm. Happy brunch, happy Sunday. Um, I think it's the third Sunday of Advent. Um, not sure, but again, go for Brut. Go for Campari if you want it nice and red. Go for Aperol if you don't mind the color being a little bit lighter and it'll be a little less bitter and just do a nice San Pellegrino, and you've got the makings of a great Christmas cocktail. Okay, so ching ching, and we'll see you tomorrow.